Today, I'll compare CoCreate Modeling 17 and the previous major release, CoCreate 16. I'll look at three typical design tasks, working with 2D profiles, 3D patterns, and driving changes to 3D models. If you're familiar with the CoCreate 17 sneak peeks, you'll have seen the models and actual tasks I'll compare. With 17, I've seen a doubling of my design productivity, specifically, reducing the time spent creating 2D profiles by 40%, modifying models up to two times faster, and reducing the time spent working with advanced 3D patterns by 60%. During the real-time comparison, CoCreate Modeling 17 will run on the right-hand side of your screen, CoCreate 16 on the left. I'd say I'm familiar with CoCreate 16, and after the upgrade training for 17, I was quickly able to take advantage of the new release. So let's get started. In the first design task, I'll create a model using 2D profiles. While CoCreate 16 has some excellent 2D capabilities, CoCreate 17 is even easier, more predictable, and faster. One of the first things you'll notice is that context-sensitive mini toolbars offer the right options at the right time, whereas with CoCreate 16, I often have to open up the traditional menus and find the right commands. You'll also notice that in 17, I can enter precise values for the 2D geometry using on-the-fly dimensions. I create the profile quickly, and then simply pull and push the profile to create the base. And as I create the mounting brackets, you'll see that I no longer need construction geometry. I can create the profile on the fly. With 16, I have to create the construction geometry, ready to overdraw the profile. Another important difference with 17 is that I can work with overlapping and intersecting profiles, so I can sketch profiles a lot easier. I can also use one work plane for multiple profiles, and push and pull the profiles to create the mounting bracket. So while in CoCreate 16 I'm still creating the construction geometry for the first mounting bracket, in CoCreate 17 I'm finished and moving on to create the second bracket. I can quickly create the second bracket by leveraging the existing profile and simply change it to make the changes to create the second. Again, notice that I can change the profile directly and don't need to open the classic menus. And again, once the profile is finished, I can simply push and pull the profile to create the bracket. So while I'm still creating the first profile with CoCreate 16, I'm finished with CoCreate 17. And the measured results are impressive, with a 43% time saving, 54% less mouse travel, and 42% fewer mouse clicks. If you want to continue to watch how I create the rest of the model in CoCreate 16, feel free. If you want to skip to the next design task, forward this recording to 3 minutes and 3 seconds. So let's look at CoCreate 16. I'm now creating the second mounting bracket. I'll reposition the work plane so that I can reuse the construction geometry I used for the first mounting. I'll delete the construction geometry I don't need, and create the construction geometry I need to add for the new profile. Now I create the closed profile, making sure there's no intersecting geometry. And finally, I extrude the profile using the classic extrude menu options. Finished. In our next design task, I'll create and change an advanced pattern in both CoCreate 16 and CoCreate 17. In this example, I'll use the step at the bottom of the ladder to create a pattern of all the steps. With CoCreate 17, I can create the base pattern from features, parts, and assemblies, whereas in 16 I can only select a subset for my base pattern. In CoCreate 17, I build the base pattern from the boss with the through hole on the side of the ladder, the mounting assembly including nut and bolt, and the step, which is also an assembly. On the fly, I quickly create a user-defined feature by boxing the boss with the through hole. I also define how the feature should behave when I create the pattern. In CoCreate 16, I have to create the pattern of through holes in a number of steps. First I copy the through hole as a recognized feature, and then copy it. Back in CoCreate 17, I've created my base pattern, and can now use it to create all the steps simultaneously. And now back in version 16, I copy the assembly in a second step to create the pattern. Now, while the creation in both versions seems roughly the same, when it comes to modifying the pattern, CoCreate 17 is significantly faster as I only need to change one pattern, and not the two I created in CoCreate 16. So in CoCreate 17, the modification to the pattern is performed in just a few steps, while in 16, I have to repeat a number of steps. So while I'm still making the modification with CoCreate 16, I'm finished with CoCreate 17. And the measured results are impressive again, with a 50% time saving, 66% less mouse travel, and 46% fewer mouse clicks. If you want to continue to watch how I make the pattern modification with CoCreate 16, feel free. If you want to skip to the next design task, Forward this recording to 4 minutes and 55 seconds. So with CoCreate 16, I'm now recreating the pattern of the through holes, because there isn't an easy way to modify them. After identifying the through hole features, I copy them to create the new pattern, and then have to paste them back into the sides of the ladder. Finally, I use the base steps to create a pattern with the new values. In our last design task, I'll modify the design. In CoCreate 17, I'll work directly with the model, using mini toolbars and the new tools available in the 3D Copilot. 
With CoCreate 16, I use the traditional UI methods. I don't need these in 17, so let's focus on just the viewport. The first thing to notice in 17 is the fully rendered design, including materials, realistic shadows, and a mirror plane. It really improves clarity of design. As I modify this design, the mini toolbars provide quick access to operations right next to where I'm working. This optimizes interaction and speed. With CoCreate 16, I'm using the traditional approach of menus and commands. New in CoCreate 17 is that design changes are instant and real-time, no previews or waiting for updates. This improves the speed, and I see the result instantly, making changes intuitive. Notice that I can also drive changes by using the three dimensions that appear on the fly in the most relevant position and direction, making changes intuitive and precise. While in CoCreate 16, I often have to specify both the direction for the modification and enter the value using the more traditional menu-based approach. With CoCreate 17, there's definitely a lot less mouse travel and fewer picks, and the new real-time interaction really accelerates working in 3D to modify designs. So while I'm still making modifications with CoCreate 16, I'm finished with CoCreate 17. And again, the results are impressive, with 45% time saving, 45% less mouse travel, and 22% fewer mouse clicks. If you want to continue to watch how I drive changes in CoCreate 16, feel free. If you want to skip to the summary, forward this recording to 6 minutes and 49 seconds. So again, in CoCreate 16, I have to interact with the traditional menus and enter values into the menu fields, rather than entering the values directly on the model. I also have to measure certain values directly off the model to drive the exact change I'm looking for. This again needs me to open new menus and commands. So overall, when comparing CoCreate 17 and 16 on a number of key design tasks, the 17 release dramatically increases design productivity, up to two times faster than version 16. With CoCreate 17, I've been able to reduce time spent creating 2D profiles by 40%, modify models up to two times faster, and reduce the time spent creating and modifying advanced 3D patterns by 60%. I've really enjoyed working with CoCreate 17, and now with the CoCreate 17 release, you should be planning your upgrade and doubling your design productivity. Look out for more sneak peeks and release information in CoCreate News, or visit ptc.com.